All over the world There's a mighty revelation Of the glory of the Lord As the waters cover the sea All over the world The Spirit is moving All over the world As the prophet said it would be Glory of the Lord as waters cover the sea. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Good morning. How good is it to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 Let's all stand up and praise the Lord this morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. Apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. It is your love.
that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control.
from my enemies till all my fears are gone. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Yeah.
His family back with us, his sister Catherine, back with us today. They were away last week to a de baby dedication. Billy took it on his own and he did a wonderful job. Thank you, Billy. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. I see some first time visitors with us today. Uh, I've got some over there and uh, we want to welcome you to the church. It's one thing about here, the pastor knows when you're here and he knows when you're not here. Yeah. There's good and bad in that. But we welcome you all in the name of the Lord. Paul, it's good to have you back. This is your second or third week? Third. Third? Wow, I'm not very good at math, as you can tell. But, uh, what did he say? Can you tell? What did he say? Yes, you do. You're in charge of the vacuum in for the rest of the week. <laughs> Be here Monday morning and I have someone that will take care of you. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Yes, Turn in your Bibles with me this morning to Psalm 100. And this is what the Bible tells us to do when we come to the house of the Lord. It says these words. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. The Bible also says where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. And he's here with us this morning, not to spend an idle hour, but he's here to bless us, to encourage us, and for us to enter in and to praise and to worship him. He's worthy of our praise. Can I hear an amen, amen. this morning? Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. I'm thankful this morning. Yes. That's the tag on my car. Grateful. GR8FL. Grateful. That's what I drive around in. Grateful. So I have to watch. I don't cut anybody off. And yeah. I'm grateful. Right. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. The steadfast love of the Lord it never faileth. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. How many know that God is faithful? Yes. You know, he'll never leave you nor forsake you and he'll not let you down. We've got a special couple who uh, dated for a couple of years in their younger days and, and they've uh, been married a couple of years now and and I would like to just honor them this morning for God's faithfulness. It's Gail and Sam Baylor. They've been married now. Wait for it. You're not going to believe this. Tell me that the, his grace and his mercy endureth forever. They've been married for 63 years. Pastor Zach and my, my daughter Bonnie have been married today for 13 years. Yes. Zach. 12. <laughs> How well, but it just felt like 13. <laughs> and uh, just imagine you've got 50 years to go. <laughs> Gail, Sam, as a church you've been with us, you've been such a faithful couple in our church. Been here day in, day out. I think I can count the amount of times that you've missed in one hand, maybe two, at a push. Uh, we want to honor you both this morning for 63 years. And Maggie, would you present this to Gail, please? Could you just come to the front here, the two of you? Sam, Gail. Up to Gail. Hallelujah. Bring them out. I hear you're all clapping and cheering. Yeah, Gail, thank you so much I'm going to come down and I've got one question to ask you both I've got one question to ask you both and don't tell me you switch your hearing aids off and throw them down <laughs> all right okay. how did you make it for 63 years what was the common denominator I just always felt like I should I didn't have <laughs> <a word. laughs> 
Give me a spiritual answer here. I know, but I didn't know the Lord then. And, but listen, the blessing came when we had our son, and he, believe it or not, was the reason we came to the Lord. And, I mean, later on in his life, he was about five, and he used to get by his bed and pray. And we never understood that because we didn't pray. And he had gone to a little nursery place, and they prayed. But he would just on his own do that. And then he led his wife to the Lord a week before they were married. So we've been really blessed by the Lord. I mean, our kids, our grandkids, our great-grandkids are all Christians, every one of them. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, how can you out bless God? You can't do it. Yes, things happen that are hard. We have some here that know that today, that it's really hard when you lose somebody. But I tell you what, God will fill your heart back up if you let him. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think for staying together for 63 years, they deserve a medal, don't you? <laughs> now, just by your hand clap, which one of the two deserves the medal? So, let's see. Is it, is it Gail? Or is it Sam? Oh, my. Even Stevens. Yes, amen. It won't go over my hair. Okay. <laughs> oh, it won't go over her hair. Congratulations. Hold it up, Gail. They're, okay. ta they're taking pictures. Sammy, here you go. One for you, too. You get a medal, too. And I'll give you a new case for your purities. <laughs> Let's give him a big hand. Let me pray with him. Let's pray with him together. Father, I'm just so grateful for this wonderful couple and what they've led to this church. And all the love and the input that they've put into it, all the hours and sacrifice that they've made through the years. Their faithfulness unto you, Lord Jesus, has been an inspiration to all of us. And Lord, I give you thanks this morning for both of them. And I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to bless them above and beyond whatever they could ask, think, or even dream of. Lord, as I know that they put you first, and all the other things are added on to them. And Lord Jesus, we just ask you to continue to bless them in every area, in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Give them a big hand now. Woo! Hey, I never, uh, hang on. Sam, I never asked you. What's your answer? What's How you made it for 63 years? God's grace. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was good, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. I like the one of those folks in there. They have been a real blessing to me. They've been stood by me through thick and thin, and storms, hurricanes, yeah. tornadoes, tornadoes. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything, they've been here. And we just love them. And uh, if you all stay here for 63 years, you'll get a bunch of flowers too. And perhaps a medal. Praise God. Just before I change the order of service this morning, uh, I would like us just to have a word of prayer for, for a family in Scotland. Uh, one of my pastors in Scotland was a man named James Smith. Pastor James Smith, I'll never forget him. He built my house and our house in Scotland, and he was a, a man I really looked up to and honored. He was a faithful man, faithful to the, the Word, faithful to the Lord, faithful to his family. He's with the Lord now, and uh, I always just loved him, and he was always there for us when we needed him. And his daughter passed away this last week, and her service, she's the same age as Melissa. And I said to Maggie, how would we feel if we come home and we heard that news? It's not something that we, anybody would like to hear. And it's a thing that's very difficult for anyone to go through. And I know that, that there are those that are with us this morning that have lost a loved one. And it's only by his grace and his mercy that we can, we can and, and time it. But we don't suffer like those that have no hope, because we have our hope in Jesus. Her name is Wendy, and uh, James's youngest daughter, and her services on Wednesday in Scotland. And I'd just like you to pray for that family, the family that have loved the Lord, served the Lord, and uh, 
I just love them and I admire them and I appreciate them. And I'm praying for all those in the family right now this morning. Our church, Family Life Church, in Swanee, Georgia, we are lifting you up today that God will give you mercy, that he'll see you through. He'll hear you and that you'll receive the peace that passes all the understanding. And when you receive that peace, don't turn it down because it's from the Lord. And he's the only one that can give you that peace. So this morning we pray for little Wendy Louise this morning. As she's with you, we pray for our husband and our sisters, for our mother and our grandmother, and all the family there in Scotland. Lord, I just ask you to undertake like only you can, in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Service Wednesday. Commander Johnny Coe, all the way from Swanee, Georgia. No, uh, Sugar Hill. Close. Oh, he's swinging the day. Come on, Johnny. Here he comes. Bless your heart. Hi, Captain. Thank you for this opportunity. Put him up, Jimmy. How many here would say, <clears throat> Thy will be done? There's a few. How many, how many say, Not thy will, but my will? It's what I want to be done. Got one over here. Okay, it's the preacher. Preachers always want their will done. Tuesday, last Tuesday, God began to deal with me and he gave me a message. I said, why are you giving me this message? I have no word to, to, to preach this. You know, do I find somebody and grab a hold of them? And, you know, uh, and then Wednesday night, he filled that cup and uh, and then Thursday, Pastor calls me. Says, "Would you do the table?" I said, "Well," and I go, "I was going. Why do I have a message?" And the Lord said, "I gave you one. This is this is it. Thy will be done, no matter what." And when the pastor hit that note about that young lady dying, you see, this is what he's given me. When Jesus uh, rose from the dead, he visited his disciples a couple of times. And the last time, they, were, they had given up on him. They went back to their old ways of fishing and yada, yada. And Jesus meets them on the, on the lake, on the shore. And he says, follow me. And uh, they were a little bit confused. You know, what do you mean, follow you? I said, well, I just told you to catch these fish and you brought them in. And... Now he says, Peter, he says, you got all these fishes again, and you, you got your friends with you. He says, do you love them more than you love me? God's will be done. Now there's a thing that I'm, I'm a faith man. I, I take life and death. Ecclesiastes says there's a time for, to live, there's a time to die. God said that. There's a time. In between, we're going to live and walk by faith. We're going to use scripture. We're going to defeat the enemy. And we're, we're going to you know, have our children healed. We're going to have our, our parents doing very well. We're going to have good jobs. We're going to have peace and all this. But then there comes a time. And uh, when we partake of the sacraments, we're saying, Thy will be done because you are Lord of our lives. In other words, it belongs to you, not to me. When it's all said and finished, it comes down no matter what age. He says, I know what's in the future. Hezekiah was the 13th king of Judah. And the Bible says there was no other king like him before or after. Even David and Solomon. He was such a righteous man. He brought the, the, the kingdom back into the uh, arms of of God and things were going well and the prophet went to him and says Hezekiah he said uh, God's calling you home son he said oh no oh, oh what happened thy will be done and he got down and just said I've done everything good for you and God sent the prophet back and says I'm going to add 15 years to his life 
It's going to be the worst 15 years he ever spent. He lost his kingdom, lost his reputation. His children were squirrely. And uh, I mean, the whole ship, when he was the Titanic and it went down, God was saying, uh, I know best. We have a saying it back in the 60s, Father knows best. Remember that? Well, our Father knows best. The disciples had Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You could drink poison, you know. In other words, somebody can try to poison you. Snakes could bite you, scorpions. But, you know, you're taking care of life and death. In between, we have that. But there comes a time. And then that time came when they were on that shore and the disciples were following Jesus, and Jesus began to tell them what death they were going to die to honor Him, to honor God. And so He's telling them this, you know, uh, Peter, you this way, James, you this way. Now, John, you're going to go to the island of Patmos, and you're going to write some books, you're going to become a great author, and you're going to have a long life, and you're going to take care of Mother Mary. Peter walks right behind him and says, why does John get to do all of this and I've got to die? He says, what is it to you what I do with his life? Which, it, to me, you know, I'm a rogue scholar. And when I look at things like that, I go, ooh, individualism. I have sovereignty over each and one of your lives. And if I say it's time for you to come, and you've lived this life, victory, there comes a time I'm calling you home. Do you, when you take of the sacraments, you're saying, I trust you. You are my Lord, you're my boss, and I have to give in to the will of God. Even if you'll stand and stand, will die in faith. But see, God knows the future. He knows the Hezekiah of your life. It would have been better that he had gone then. God's wisdom is far beyond and superior than our own. So when we take of the sacraments this morning, let's say, God, thy will be done. And then I'll add this. He said, do you love them more than me? Are you willing to let them go? Let me have them. My will be done and sometimes we want to hang on and then we have a miserable 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 life you can have a saved soul but a, a miserable life so when we take of the sacraments let's say they will be done from this point to this point I'm going to live by the scripture and I'm going to claim everything that you've given me but if you'll walk with the Holy Spirit He'll tell you, this one is unto death. Jesus said about the, that, that little one, he says, this sickness is not unto death, meaning what? There are those that are unto death. He has the keys of life and death. He is boss, he is Lord. So, where's my cup? Daughter, bring me me cup. I know this isn't a real, you know, heavy and just, you know, oh, I'm so happy. But it gives you peace. Thank you. This one here, when she was born, I knew that Satan wanted to kill her. I'd stay up and I'd vigil all night and all night and all night and all night. She's the one that uh, her mother, when he gave birth to her, had a different name and the angel came to Deborah, my wife. Now, you got to remember, my wife's Baptist. She don't believe in all that. And uh, the angel said, you change her name to Tabitha. You see, so in between life and death, I had that power and authority over my children. But see, Jesus is Lord. He comes in. It's, it's time to go. You see? And it gives you peace. They're with Jesus. And so let it be. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name.
that you are Lord, your boss, your king, your, your the wisdom is so superior that I will trust in you when I take of the sacraments. I'm saying the same thing that you did on the Mount of Olives uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane when you said, Lord, I don't want to die this way. And then he paused and said, they will be done. Nevertheless, I don't want to go, but your will must be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, John. Skies lay low where you are. On the earth you rest your feet. Yet the hands, the cradle, the star. show you exactly where to put it and put it in the back there as you leave and I know God will truly bless you. Jimmy could you put up on the screen the services please? Christy will help you if you can't find it. Hallelujah. These are the services that we have.
uh, through the week. There is going to be a change in them. I think you might need to go check them out, Christy. Give them the services. Jimmy was away on vacation. As you can see, he's not back yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got it? Here we go. These are the services that we have throughout the week. Uh, you can read them while Pastor Zach gives you an announcement about Wednesday night. Hallelujah. We're not doing that. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you would do without me. Uh. <laughs> the good news is, I did not hear just now Pastor Derek tell me to sing, so don't worry. He, he was reminding me of that uh, last week was the uh, last uh, episode of season one of The Chosen. So season one has been concluded here at our Bible study. It, it's been really wonderful. Uh, we've had a lot of really good feedback, and I think I've said before, but I want to point out again, um, Sometimes when you do Bible studies, you're not sure if the people will like it, will it bless them, will just all these intangibles. And uh, one of the one things that really jumped out is that uh, I, the feedback that we got is people were disappointed that it was coming to an end. So that's you always want people wanting more. You don't want it to be like a hostage situation when they're like, okay, time to go, Get, let me out of here. Um, so that was it's been really really good um, uh, for those who weren't able to make it or who. Um, uh, for whatever reason, just uh, hadn't seen it or missed an episode, feel free to reach out to those who have, and uh, they'll tell you all about it. And I can also provide uh, the resources to anyone who wants to get caught up or wants to see it. So, so that when in a few weeks, I'm not sure if the exact date, maybe in August, I want to say, we will pick up season two. Off for the summer. So we're off for the summer until August. So, um, uh, so look forward to that. Uh, um, I, I'm a big fan. So. Give him a big hand for his hard work. He did a great job. Really great. And, and thank you so much for everyone behind the scenes helping to make sure that the food was there, that uh, the drinks were there, that everything was set up um, and ready. Um, it really, really helped things uh, along. So thank y'all to y'all who did that. So um, we'll kick right into the message uh, this morning. Uh, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to be reading today in the Gospel of John, starting at chapter 8, verse 31 through 59. That's John 8, 31 through 59. And we're jumping right in into a scene where Jesus is having um, a verbal battle with some people. And it gets very tense. And we'll We'll, we'll talk about you know, what is going on and what is being said and what this means, not only for the people who are hearing Jesus back then, but for all of us who are hearing it this morning. So, verse 31 of John chapter 8. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we are not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? Is it because you cannot bear to hear my word? You are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. 
He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. So this passage is near the end of a very back and forth, very tense confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees. The gloves are off and Jesus is letting them have it and they are not happy. <laughs> so who is Jesus? Or as the Jews in our text put it, who does Jesus make himself out to be? The an this answer not only provides the key to understanding the Trinity, but it is the most important question we can ask, period. And there are many correct answers. Peter gave a good one. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So did John. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thomas finally got it right. My Lord and my God. As did Mary Magdalene who said, Rabboni. Historically, the church has offered its own answers, often in response to confusion or misunderstanding. So let's follow Jesus' lead in our text and use his self-confession to shape your confession of who Jesus is. And as always, the five rules of reading the Bible correctly are look for Jesus from the very beginning. Look for Jesus. He is there because the scriptures testify about him. Two, Properly distinguish what is the law and what is the gospel because mixing these two will confuse what the Christian life looks like. It will mistakenly make you think that you living like Christ post-conversion is the gospel. It is not. The gospel is not now you will live your life like Jesus lived his. The gospel is now you will be raised as Jesus was raised. Do we seek to love our neighbor? Yes. Do we seek to do will of the Lord? Yes. Do we do it perfectly? No. And see, the law is not designed to save you. That's not what the law does. The law is there to tell you that you have no hope apart from a Savior. It is like a mirror. Are you doing the will of God? Not all the time, no. The law is there to tell you that you are in desperate need of a Savior. And the gospel is there to tell you that you have one. It is Jesus who saves sinners. It is Jesus who is our only hope. It is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. For all those rascals like me, who it's always two steps forward, three steps back. And just like Paul in Romans 7 says, I don't do the things that I want to do. I do the things that I don't want to do. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And he gives the answer. Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ. Not me and me better. 
Not me and me betterfied, but Christ and him crucified is my only hope. And the third, fourth, and fifth way of reading the Bible or the importance of Bible interpretation is context, context, context. I saw a funny meme once of this. You have seen those inspirational calendars where I have like inspirational quotes from the Bible and it's for your day. And on this day, you, there's this inspirational quote. And it was a funny meme because I don't think any, this is real. But there was one that showed an inspirational quote from the Bible that says, if you just bow down and worship me, all of the glory, all of the treasure, all the wonderful things of this world will be yours. And see, that's not a very inspirational quote if you know who is being quoted in that meme. That's what the devil promised Christ in his temptation to him. So, context is important. Jesus' confession in this text was not part of a private lesson to his disciples. It came at the end of a brawl with the Jews who rejected him. And the scuffle began in John 8, 31, when Jesus announced he would set his disciples free. They bristled against the implications of denying the need for freedom and said they call themselves children of Abraham. This led Jesus to hit back with the accusation that their father was actually the devil. And this led to the Jews making a similar counterclaim. A demon possesses him, they insisted. But Jesus would not let it stand. He called them liars. Then, if that were not enough, he made an astounding claim. Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And they got the point. He was claiming to be God. How, may you ask? Jesus did not say before Abraham was I. Jesus, Jesus did not say before Abraham was, I was. He did not say, I am older than Abraham. He said before Abraham was, I am. Let's flip right to Exodus chapter 3. Starting in verse 13. This is Moses at the burning bush. Then Moses said to God, this voice that's coming from the burning bush is not being consumed. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers have sent me to you, and they will ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. So, Jesus here is saying, that voice that was speaking to Moses from the burning bush, that was my voice. And that's why the Jews are ready to kill Jesus. Because Jesus very boldly in front of them said to them, I am God. So all, you'll see all these, you know, people will try to discredit Jesus and, oh, Jesus never claimed to be God. Yeah, he did. That's why they wanted to kill him. He claimed to be God multiple times. The Jews were ready to stone him. This is why. They knew he just claimed to be God. And they did not believe that he was God, so they were ready to kill him for blasphemy. And here's the funny thing about God. Here's the funny thing about Jesus through Scripture. Jesus' harshest confrontations, for the most part, his harshest confrontations with anybody in Scripture are with those who don't believe that they need him. But we also see in Scripture, those who have no hope apart from Christ and look to Christ as their only hope. Remember me when you enter your kingdom. The man who said that had nails through his hands. That was it. He was done. In a weird way, talk about the luckiest guy in, the, in existence. The only thing that could have saved the thief on the cross was raised right up next to him. Talking about being at the right place at the right time. In a weird kind of way. It doesn't look like the right place in the right time. But for that man and for where he is right now, next to God right now, in paradise. Because he looked to someone who was his only hope and it was Jesus. And what did Jesus say to him? Today, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. If it sounds like 
The law says do this, and it is never done. The gospel says believe this, and everything is done already. If it sounds like a command, that's the law, and you should do it. But when you don't, there are promises given in Scripture. Promises from God to you. It's not a transaction, it's a gift. You're not standing in line with everything in your pockets to hand over to God so that he will give you his promises. The promises look like a gift like this. When Lazarus was dead in his tomb, he heard a word from Jesus. Lazarus, rise. Lazarus, come forth. And he did. A dead man did what Jesus told him to do. Why? Because the word said so and said to. When Jesus says something... When God says something, it has a creative word. It does what it says. Jesus' claim about being before Abraham landed on this text today. But as astounding as this claim is, that Jesus is God, just as Father is God, just as Holy, the Holy Spirit is God, this is not the most significant answer Jesus gave in this gospel reading that we read today. It is this. What matters for us is what he said about what he does rather than who he is. For this, we turn back to verse 51 when Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And that's a promise. That's what Jesus does, he keeps his promise. And this is the main point of this sermon today. Your hope is not in the promises that you make to Jesus. Not your promises to live a better life. Not your promises to sin less and live holier lives. Not your promise to love your neighbor more. Not your promise to live the victorious Christian life, obeying as best as you can. Yes, do that. But that is not your hope. Your hope is in Jesus Christ and in the promises that he has made to you. That is your only hope. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And in this promise right here, we have hope. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. I know you, what you are asking. Well, okay, so how do I keep his word? Tell me all the things I need to do. I suggest return to the question the Jews asked Jesus in John 8, 53. Who do you make yourself out to be? There are many answers given today. Some are false, need correction. Is Jesus a life coach? Is he a great man? Is he just a great moral teacher? The right answer for our sermon today is given to us in the text we read. He is the one who saves us from death. For those who are being able, for those here who are not concerned about their mortality, this claim may not mean so much. But to anyone who has watched a casket close for the last time, or to anyone whose body has begun to slow down a little bit, this promise means and transforms the world. From this promise flows a lifetime of doing what he says, namely, keeping his word. We keep his word by reading the scriptures and clinging to its promises. We keep his word by joining our brothers and sisters in worship, study, and conversation. We keep his word through daily habits of devotion and prayer. We keep Jesus' word and trust his promises to raise them from the dead. And one more promise before the team comes forward. When you are too weak, this is very important because it has saved me. When you are too weak to keep hold of Jesus, he has promised to keep hold of you. He promised. He promised. To every baptized child of God in this room, to everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been given specific promises that when you are faithless, he will remain faithful. That where he is, you will be also. That he separated your sins as far as the east is from the west. That he has literally traded places with you on the cross. The cross that you earned, he took. The crown of thorns that you earned, he wore. 
and he exchanges with you life everlasting, a crown of righteousness that's his, but he gives to you as a gift. Why? Why? Because it pleases God to give you the kingdom. That's why. Because it pleases God to bless you. God loves you so much more than you think he does. As much as we love our children, it's an infinite love. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. So before we leave here today, I want to make it very clear to everyone in this room that they have heard the good news and they have received the good news. How do we receive? The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And here's the word of God. Christ was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And then three days later, he rose from your just, for your justification. And he did that for you. And all who believe in this will be saved. That is a promise. There are no resumes in the Lamb, books of, Lamb Book of Life. Only names. Hallelujah. Only names. And before we leave here today, I want you to have full assurance and confidence that your name is in that book. For those who you, of you have been, who believe and have been baptized, there's a promise that was given to you. Not my promise, not man's promise, God's promise. His name was placed on you. The Bible says it was. So now it's not you got baptized, you are baptized. It's who you are. I tell Kate every night, on his good days and his bad days, I tell him the same thing. Cade, you are a baptized child of God. And there are certain promises that come with that. For those of you who may, maybe this is the first time you're hearing about Jesus. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't have that assurance that you maybe believe that you need to believe that you have. This is for you right now. If you say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Renew me so that I may believe in your word and walk in your ways. If that's you, <laughs> I've got wonderful news to tell you. The kingdom belongs to you because God promised. For Christ's sake, this is most certainly true. You have the entire forgiveness of all of your sins because of who Jesus is and what he has done. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a wonderful week, y'all. God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. That's a good word. Song, I was going to sing a song to you, but I'll just give you the words. I'm 69 years old this year. Can you believe that? I know I don't look it, but I am. 50 years ago, I gave my heart to Jesus, about the knee in a little Scottish floor in Scotland about two in the morning. And I accepted Christ into my heart and life. 50 years ago, can you believe it? And I guess I could sing the, or say the words of the song, Jesus made the difference in me. Once my heart was bound by sin, but now, praise God, I'm free. Because Jesus made the difference in me. And I know if he can do it for me, he can do it for anyone. Amen? Praise the Lord. God bless you. You see the announcements are up there. No Bible study this Wednesday. We're putting it off for the summer. But you have a wee break. And uh, the rest of them all stand if Jimmy puts them up. It's a good man, Jimmy, as we leave.
And uh, God bless you. Thanks for being here today, each and every one of you. I pray that you'll leave here not the same as you came, but wonderfully changed. In Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise the Lord.